Okay, for this video, I'm gonna address basically bootable drives. So when I download an image for a operating system, whether it's a Linux, um, whether it's going to be Windows, it usually comes in what's called the .iso um, format. Now, when I have that, and so I've got a bunch in here, so let's look at some images, OSI. So these are all different. So here's a Windows 10 Consumer Edition .iso, okay? So I'm gonna right click, and one thing that's nice about it in Windows is I can just say, burn this image. I can also mount it, which is another interesting feature if it's not an operating system, but like a disk you wanna mount, it pretends that it's actually just in um, a CD drive. But I can just click burn image, pop a DVD in, and have it go, okay? And it's fine. Although you will notice that on our later Windows, okay, the non-32 bit, um, we're starting to get past a regular single-sided DVD, so you have to have a double-sided DVD. But one easy way, and frankly, a movement that we've had a lot, instead of burning it to a DVD, because a lot of computers don't even have DVD drives anymore, we're going to make a bootable flash drive. So I can't just put that ISO on a flash drive, because if I do, it's not gonna do anything, it's just gonna act like a file. So I need to make a bootable, and there's a lot of different programs that do this. I would say that my favorite is Rufus. You can get it from rufus.ie, and basically you download it, you can get the full install, or you can get it portable. Um, I love the portable app. What that means is it doesn't actually have to install into your system, into your Windows system and registry and stuff. It can just grab it um, and run it from within the folder. So once you get that, then it's a, quite a simple thing to actually do. So let's show how to make one. Um, so I'm just gonna pull up my Rufus, and it comes up here. Um, now, it's gonna say, what would you like to do? So I can make, now if I say a non-bootable, sometimes what happens is once I make a bootable flash drive, it's gonna create a lot of partitions on that drive. And you can't just erase it and use that flash drive again. Instead, what you're gonna have to do is remove those partitions. And you can do it in command prompt in Windows and do a disk part and delete those. It's kind of a pain, but if I just say non-bootable, I can actually kind of cleanly erase those partitions and then just reformat it in Windows. And I think it's actually simple. But we're gonna go ahead and select an ISO. So I'm gonna select, and I'm gonna say Clonezilla here, because that's what we've been doing on some others, but I could do Windows, whatever. Once I click open, it's automatically gonna kind of say what kind of partition scheme and target system it's going in. So this is going in master boot record. This is an older one. This does not have all the secure boot and stuff of UEFI, um, and that's okay. If I chose a modern Windows 10, it usually will then change that down and go GPT instead of the MBR, the master boot record partition scheming and say UEFI, and you can override that. Most of the time, it's pretty smart about recognizing it and choosing the correct one. Volume label, you can absolutely change it. It's just gonna be coming from what the ISO is called. File system and stuff, it should know. Notice that this is a very interesting one because it's calling it a FAT32 um, as a default. Very different if this is a Windows, it would um, say NTFS. And then I click Start. And it's letting you know you should probably write an ISO. There's times you might wanna do DD image mode, but most of the time ISO, I've done this for quite a few things. It's saying, look, it's about to wipe it out. So make sure that up here on device, that that is actually the correct flash drive that you have in there. If you have multiple ones, you might erase everything. It usually does a good job of selecting it. I know 16 gigs, that's not my hard drive. So I know that one's right. So I'm gonna click okay. It's gonna clear all of the previous um, partitions, which is great. And then it's going to write. And once I see the ready, it's done. Um, I click close, and then I just wanna make sure that I'm gonna go ahead and safely eject because I do have an active flash drive um, in. So I'm just gonna right click on my USB and eject. And that is it. I just made a bootable flash drive.